Thank you everyone for joining us on this series of podcasts that will focus on men's mirrors and their related applications. Uh, for today's podcast, we have three people participating. My name is Jake, currently the business development manager at Hamamazu. With me are Kiko, the technical support manager, and Mario, the men's mirror senior engineer. Both of them are experts at Hamamazu supporting this particular product. But Kiko and Mario, thank you both for joining. Uh, just to start, uh, could one of you uh, give audience an introduction of the men's mirror technology and the reasons why they should use this device? Sure, Jake, I can explain. Well, first, Memus and Mirror are not the new technology. They have existed for many years, but are now slowly developing as a good replacement for various mechanical scanners, such as Galdo Mirror. Because of their compactness and a low power consumption, they have been used in various types of application such as LiDAR, 3D shape recognition, the factory for factory automation, augmented reality, confocal microscopy, and medical devices. In these applications, the mirror is used for steering or scanning the beam. Electrostatic, electromagnetic, and a piezo mirror are well known in the market. Each mirror has a unique benefit and disadvantages. Is that right, Mario? Yeah, that's right, Akiko. There are three main MEMS mirror technologies in the market today. The electrostatic type has a small total package size, and it can be made into a thin, flat shape. It doesn't require a magnet, so you can expect low manufacturing cost in volume. Low power consumption and larger mirror size are also good features of electrostatic type. Well, on the other hand, its operation is a little more complicated than the other MEMS mirrors. It requires relatively higher voltage and its speed is slower than the other types of MEMS mirrors. The electromagnetic type is not as thin as other MEMS mirrors because of the magnet but it has higher torque, so that means it can achieve a good balance of MEMS mirror size, speed, and tilt angle. Also, the operating voltage is low, so operating this type of mirror is easier than the other MEMS mirrors. The piezo type is a unique MEMS mirror. The key features of piezo mirrors are small size and high speed. The mirror size is small, but it can be operated in tens of kilohertz with good tilt angle. The drawback is the small mirror size, and also it is difficult to use in linear motion. Great, that's a great overview. Thank you so much on that overview for the MEMS mirror. And they do look like and sounds like very unique devices. Now, uh, from what I understood out of the three types Mario just described, uh, Hamamazu makes the electrical magnetic type. Is that correct? And also, could you, uh, Mario, give us the reasons why Hamamazu choose that type of mirror design? Yeah, that's a good question, Jake. We believe the electromagnetic type is superior in terms of torque. So that means the, uh, electro uh, electromagnetic type has a balance of mirror size, tilt angle, and speed. However, we do understand the other types of mirror could be a better fit for some other applications. But we believe electromagnetic type has the best balance of these uh, key specs. Hamamatsu makes three kinds of electromagnetic MEMS mirrors. Uh, 1D linear, 2D linear, and 2D scanning mirrors. We don't make 1D and 2D resonant mirrors, uh, the 2D scanning mirror has one resonant axis, so it can be used as a 1D resonant mirror. Well, Akiko, for the people who are just learning about these mirrors, can you give more details regarding each type of electromagnetic mirror and uh, which type of mirror is suitable for what type of application? Sure, Mario. <laughs> For choosing the right mirror, it's depending on the type of scanning system you try to design. If you are doing a laser beam steering and you need to control the angle and the speed, the linear mirror is the right one. 
1D and then 2D linear mirror has the freedom of speed and the angle. However, they are slower than resonant mirror and have a control over the, um, sorry, the mirror and a narrower the tilt angle. On the other hand, if you are doing the faster scanning for image capturing or image projection, a 2D scanning mirror is a good, good candidate. You don't have a control over a speed of a resonant axis, but uh, you can scan a wide area quickly and uh, uniformly in resonant raster motion. A 30 hertz frame rate can be easily achieved with our 2D scanning mirror. I see, that's great information. And now I'm very comfortable on how to find or match the right mirror for my application need. But as everyone knew that each application also have different requirements. So the question I have next is what if I want a custom mirror? Could either of you give me some idea just how easy or hard would it be to customize a MEMS mirror as well? You know, some of the trade-off I have to consider or the customer has to consider when designing a custom mirror. Sure, Jake, I can, I can give the explanation. Parameters such as a tilt angle, mirror size, and operating frequency are interrelated. For example, if the mirror size is enlarged, the tilt angle needs to be narrower, and an operating frequency needs to be slower to obtain sustainable performance. As a result, one parameter such as involve changing the in, involve can change involve the entire design. Also, each mirror type has a design limit on parameters. If it involves major modification from the supplier's standard model, it can take a year or longer. Development time, because it involves uh, in developing the prototype design, mass production design, and fabrication process line. I see. So, so I guess everybody agreed that customizing a mirror can be quite challenging, and there are some trade-offs one must consider when they choose the right spec for the design. So that's understood now, but how about operating a mirror? Do you have any tip, Mario, on how users can properly operate the MEMS mirror? Yeah, yeah. yeah, Jake, that is a really good point to really know before using MEMS mirrors. Uh, for example, for scanning mirrors, you will need a, a back EMF EMF feedback circuitry to lock the mirror in resonant motion in order to stabilize the tilt angle. The mirror's mechanical resonant frequency changes with temperature, so when the driving frequency is not adjusted accordingly, the mirror tilt, ang tilt angle can quickly decay. So to stabilize the mirror angle, you need to monitor the back EMF and adjust the driving frequency accordingly. Hamamatsu MEMS mirror uh, driver board has this back EMF feedback circuitry to perform that function. For linear mirrors, you need some movement correction circuitry and a software. For accurate linear mirror control, you may need ringing correction and temperature compensation. Another correction that helps electromagnetic mirrors is the XY axis correction to move the mirror along with the perpendicular y XY axis. I would like to add that what the marketing, marketing demonstration video for operating a 2D scanning mirror and a 2D linear mirror. In those video, we will show you how to use our driver and software to operate the mirror and then explain its capabilities. By the way, thus far, we have covered the selecting the operating mirror, but a key consideration for any customer should also be uh, partnering with the right supplier who can manufacture a large volume with consistent performance because supplier must have a both capability to design op optical MEMS devices and capability for 
highly controlled and a complex fabrication process. Also, three level of development is involved in order to start mass production for MEMS mirror. First level development is prototype design to achieve desired performance. In the second level, first mirror design is modified to be manufacturable in a mass production environment, but I keep the de desired performance. Then the mass production line for fabrication processes developed at the third level. That, thank you so much for that information too. I, I do now understood that, uh, you know, not only from design point of view, but also mass produ producing the mirror is can be challenged and takes time. So um, now from operating of the mirror point of view, I do look forward uh, to have you both back in the future sessions as well. Looking forward to the deep dive video, um, uh, instruction video on how to operate the men's mirror. So I think we're running out of time and I do wanna thank everyone for attending and thank you Mario Kiko for giving us this great informative uh, session. And uh, for anyone who's watching, have any questions, you can reach out to have a massive support or we have the information we provided uh, uh, in the video as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.